Yeah, we're going to be in the book of Jude. Well, how we doing? I'm doing good. You I'm good? nearly there. I found it. You know, um, the Bible's very clear that when Israel became a nation, she became a mighty army. And um, we see that in Ezekiel, what is it, 37? Ezekiel? 30, yeah, 30, 37, where the, where the dry bones dry were bones. raised into a great nation. And in 1948, Israel became a nation. And, and uh, don't, don't kid yourself, Israel is a powerful nation. It may be tiny, but it's a powerful nation. And uh, with God on her side, it's even more powerful. And I thank God for that. Thank God for the fact that uh, we have a Bible that tells us that we're right here at the end. We're right here getting ready to go. Amen. How many excited about getting ready to go? Amen. Praise God. And uh, we've been seeing some of the things taking place on, uh, well, have you noticed that most of the attacks will be on the Sabbath? Because they know Israel, you know, they want to respect their God and honor the Sabbath. And you'll notice a lot of attacks will happen on the Sabbath that when they attack Israel. you also notice that a lot of the military strikes that we do or other nations do, they'll do it on a weekend. And the reason they do it on a weekend is they don't want you to know what's going on. Yep. And so uh, I, you know, I can read my Bible and know what's going on. And, and the Lord's coming soon. I'm excited about that. It won't be long. We're getting out of here. Amen. Amen. Jimmy, what do you think about? Uh, uh, you know, you said things are, are starting to fall apart, but that's a good thing. You see, as our, uh, our friend Jan Markell says, things aren't falling apart. They're falling into place. That's right. That's right. And, uh, and so, I mean, uh, the, the answer to all this is, is when people are surprised and shocked at the way the world yeah. looks, I always think, well, what did you expect the end of the world to look like? <laughs> that's right. That's right. But I, uh, yes, there's a, uh, the first thing that happened with Israel on the 1st of April, that was the day after I was here last time. It was on a Monday, and, and Israel blew up the house next to the embassy, the Iranian embassy in Damascus. And I posted on Facebook and begged everybody to read Isaiah 17. Yeah. We've talked about this before, that, that there is a war that could happen at any time. It doesn't have to be in the tribulation. It could happen now. All I know is it hadn't happened yet. And Damascus is going to be destroyed, and it's going to be destroyed to a point where no one will ever inhabit it again. That's never happened because Damascus is the oldest continuing city in, in the history of the world. Yes. Is that in Ezekiel 48? Uh, it's a Isaiah, uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 17 All right. is, is the, is the, the, the uh, Damascus, the, the destruction Would of Damascus. Would be destroyed. We know all the, the missiles that are being shot toward Israel, drones actually. And, um, you know, um, all the nations have rallied behind that, the best I can tell. I don't think that I haven't heard because of the media isn't saying it on the weekend, but from what I understand, most of those drones, if, if not all of them, have been shot out of the sky. And uh, America has shot some out. Uh, Great Britain has shot some out. Uh, I believe it was, uh, did, did Jordan shoot yeah, some out? Jordan, Jordan and Saudi out? Arabia. They put out Saudi a, Arabia? They, they put out ahead of time, they said, if our airspace is invaded, we don't care by whom, we're going to shoot them down. And Jordan and Saudi Arabia sided with Israel in the United States and shot Iranian aircraft out of the air. That's good. And, and you know, that just shows us that things are coming together like the 10 nations that are leaguing together. Uh, in the book of Revelation, and uh, it's all fallen in place. So, you know, you're, you're seeing people taking sides now, and you're seeing, and, and of course, not everybody's going to be against Israel at the start of the tribulation. There's going to be a league of nations that will stand with her, and then they'll turn against her at the end uh, during the middle of the great tribulation. Yes. So seeing some of these nations get behind Israel is just showing us what's happening. And if I could just briefly address that yes. uh, from last night, the Jordan and Saudi Arabia, if you have the maps in the back of your Bible, you'll see that, uh, that the land of Edom, excuse me, the land of Edom 
uh, is where, if you look at a modern map, it's where, uh, where parts of southern Jordan and northwestern Saudi Arabia come together. Uh, you know, Edom was Esau. Esau was Jacob's brother. Yeah. And, uh, and God says that in a, a, the prophecy of Obadiah, uh, it, he says that uh, this is the vision of Obadiah. Uh, it's just one book, book, so I can't tell you what chapter, but the first verse is the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We've heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise, you let us go up against her in battle. And I'm not going to read this whole book because that's not the point of focus, but it, it would only take you 10 minutes to read it. But it talks about a time when, 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 when Edom in here, which will be modern Jordan and Saudi Arabia. It talks about a time when they will help Israel, then yeah. political circumstances will change and they will turn against Israel. Yeah. And then there will come a day when God will just, he thanks them for helping Israel and then God will destroy them for turning against Israel. And so, you know, these are really big things. And then we talked about the destruction of Damascus. Just the first verse of Isaiah chapter 17, it says that, that Damascus shall be taken away from being a city and shall be a ruinous heap. It's all be left of it as a pile of debris. Now, that hadn't happened yet, but it could. It could happen. And uh, nuclear weapons, that changes everything. And all you need is one nuke. Ruin your day, right? One nuke could run the whole thing. In fact, it'll plunge us in World War III. Just one nuke will do the will do the job. And so, you know, there's so many stuff in the air. There's things flying everywhere. The drones. And did anybody hear how many drones there were? It was. Yeah, it was 300 plus at, 300. The, at the end. And they were a mix of. They had drones that they called UAVs, unmanned air vehicles, and they had uh, they had cruise missiles also that go real slow, but they also have some ballistic missiles that they send. The ballistic missiles are the larger missiles that can deliver. If you remember back during the first, uh, the first Iraq war, uh, was Saddam Hussein shelled Jerusalem with what they called the Scud missiles, the Scud bombs, and they were on these ballistic missiles. This is a missile that they can shoot off anywhere in Iran and it could land anywhere in Israel. There is so many things going on that is pointing to the end time. A lot of things going on. You know, AI, and then you've got the tracking our finances, being able to control how we buy and sell, Israel being attacked. Uh, any moment there could be a nuclear blast, which, which would change the whole scenario. Uh, Russia is pretty much weakened to the point. The scripture teaches it either just before the rapture or right after the rapture of the church, God is going to put a hook in Russia's jaw, and he's going to bring her down to fight Israel. But she's going to be destroyed. Russia's going to be destroyed. Uh, you know, when God puts a hook in her jaw, Russia's jaw, and brings her down. How I many know that, that Putin is very reluctant to get into a war right now? He's already in one. He's already in a mess, and he'd be very reluctant to get into a mess. Even Iran's reluctant to get into a full-scale war right now, and I think it's because of the nukes. Yeah, and, and, and how's this going to affect the Russian war against Ukraine? Uh, Russia was already living off of Iranian drones. That's, that's, what, they were, that's what they've been shooting at, at Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, there are a lot of things at play here. If it wasn't for, for China's money and Iran's oil and... Uh, and uh, uh, munitions, weapons production, Russia would be in big trouble right now. They would. They would. And uh, but God can change all that. Well, yeah. And they're reluctant to get into a battle. And the truth is, because they're reluctant to get into a battle, uh, God's going to bring them reluctantly. Listen, when you get into a fight reluctantly, you're going to lose. Yeah. Especially when God's against you. And that's going to happen. I don't, some people believe this war will happen prior to the rapture. Some believe it will be immediately after the rapture. But there's so many things pointing to the end time. Uh, look at the, the red heifer, for instance. They have four red heifers right now. I think one of them died. They shipped them from Texas in. And uh, if, they, if they build the new temple, if I understand it correctly, that the ashes of a red heifer has to be 
sacrifice sprinkled upon that site to build a new temple. Is that correct? That's correct. And I don't know whether we mentioned it the last time or not, but uh, I saw pictures of the altar that they have built. It's this, incredible. The special altar that they're going to burn this red heifer on. And, and it's, uh, uh, they're plan to, they plan to sacrifice the red heifer on the Passover of this year. From what I understood. And then collect, collect the ashes. From what I understood, they're going to sacrifice it April the 22nd. Now, that's just, I'm not positive about that date, but I think it's in the next few days. Yeah. They're going to offer in that. And, and this is a heifer. very high platform. You have to walk upstairs. It's, it, it's like described, like have you, you have to walk up the steps to the altar in the old temple. Well, essentially, all the the thing they, the altar they have is you go up these steps and there's a large platform that, and yeah. there's the altar. It's, but it's just like the, it's described in Solomon's yeah, that, temple. Yeah, that altar is ominous. I mean, it is incredible. Um, high tech, but yet matching the scriptures. I'm not sure about the ashes. A lot of people argue the fact that, no, the red heifer has to be sacrificed at the new temple. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, no, that's not true. They just need the ashes. Well, I was speaking mainly with about the water purification, you know, that they yes. dip the hyssop in and, the and do it like that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to guess that the, the rabbis over there know more about that than we do. So if they're going to sacrifice the red heifer, they probably know what they're doing. I guess we'd have to trust the rabbis rather than YouTube, huh? <laughs> I guarantee you, I'd trust the rabbis before I'd trust the news media. But anyway, uh, we are there. you got the red heifer. They're getting ready to build. They've already got everything in place. They've got all the tools and all the things to take care of the temple. Everything's in place. They just don't have their temple. But um, I'm telling you, when the church is taken out of here, we're going out quickly we're going out suddenly there's going to be absolute chaos on the planet and uh you're going to see the man of sin rise amen you're having fun over there aren't you yeah gail is laughing at me because this thing keeps working around where it's right in front of my mouth and it can hear me breathing <laughs> you know that that's worse than having false teeth ain't it yeah well i got them too <laughs> i can bite through a, a, a coke can really <laughs> Well, you know, all the drones being shot, that, I'm not really impressed with that. What I'm, conf uh, what I'm impressed with is all the nations are joining together. And they're, they're joining together for the sake of humanitarian, humanitarian move. They don't want innocent killed. They're not doing it for Israel, trust me. They're doing it for political reasons. They're joining to shoot down the drones because they're trying to protect the innocent. Uh, so, you know... It, they can turn on Israel overnight and uh, look like our president was about to do that. America was about to turn on Israel overnight. But the problem is, you know, praise God, Iran saved us well, there, by their a, stupidity. Yeah. There's a couple of things that worry me um, about this or that, or that have piqued my interest. I don't, I don't guess you could say I'm really worried. But uh, the, the first thing is that... Uh, Biden talked to Netanyahu today, and and uh, according to the reporters, they said that he told Netanyahu that they would that we would not participate in a retaliatory strike against Iran on their territory. That's one thing, and so that's a further backing away from our support of Israel as a country. So you need to, but we need to remember that 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 uh, that he, let's see. That he that keepeth Israel doth neither slumber nor sleep. And so God knows what's going on. And Israel doesn't need us to fight a war. They're going to do what they need to do for their survival. The other thing that bothers me is this, James. Everybody's relieved that, that nobody got killed. They had a few injuries. Uh, yeah. most, of, most, most, most by falling debris. Uh, that's all good, and, and as far as we know, all the drones and the, the aircraft were taken out. But I can't believe that that's the best that Iran's got. I can't believe that if it is the best you have, then why would you waste it all in a meaningless show? It amounted to nothing but an expensive fireworks show. That's all it was. You know? Well, some of this is political. Well, yeah, to, to, to sh just tit for tat, you know, to show them that, hey, you can't attack our embassy without us doing something. But 
I, I think that there's a might be a false sense of relief a lot a lot of, among a lot of people because uh, because nobody got hurt and we took care of it so easily. You know you know what would be harder to stop than that drone attack? Uh, uh, somebody uh, coming across the the Syrian border or the you know away from uh, away from the heat hot areas crossing some place you know with a you know, with a nuclear warhead in a suitcase. Oh yeah, that could happen. A dirty bomb, and carrying it to carrying it to the Temple Mound and setting it off, or or somebody uh, landing a boat on an unoc uh, un un unwatched piece of beach somewhere on the Mediterranean and coming ashore and uh, and setting it off in downtown Tel Aviv. That's what scares me more. I mean, we. Uh, just because they re repelled the attack, I don't think it's I don't think it's time for us to feel any relief at all. This is a this is a terrible situation. I that think has what we need wide consequences. I think what we need to keep our eyes on is Damascus. That we need to watch because that is going to be a hot spot at the end time. We need to keep our eyes on, of course, Iran. But I believe one of your big players is going to be China. Yeah. And I think they're going to come to a city near us. China did not send those balloons over America, just, you know, sightsee. And, uh, you know, there's been so many people come across our border. Uh, there is, uh, there is uh, fractions uh, in, in, uh, in America. There's people that are vowed to destroy us. Um, hopefully it won't come, it won't happen while we're here. Hopefully it all unravel after we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. But we're right here at total chaos and violence on the planet, from America all the way to Israel. Everywhere, the whole world is in a place of total chaos and destruction. And it just needs one nuclear bomb to set it off, just needs one attack, someone not using their head. And uh, of course, you can imagine what would happen if the church was raptured, how, how much chaos would be there. Yeah, I'm glad that Josh sang that song soon and very soon. It could be tonight. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, I, I was reading First um, Thess Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen, and yes. so on, about the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of, of an archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall be shall rise first, and we which are alive remaining shall be caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And the Lord said, "Stop right there." I said, what are you saying? He said, I'm going to catch you up into the clouds to meet me in the air. Glory. He said, you want to know why? I said, well, yeah, since you asked the question, I'd like to know why. And the Lord told me, he said, that's, the only, he said, that's the biggest place I've got to gather such a large assembly. Praise God. Well, praise God. They can't, they, can't, they can't gather on town square. They can't gather in a building. They can't gather in a big football stadium. The only place that's suitable for them all together, millions in the air. Isn't that good? Wow. I thought about that and I thought, man, what a place to meet in the air. I like Praise it. God. That's exciting. That's very exciting. I want to be there. Um, yeah, I, it's weird. I, I, I preached part of that this morning too. I used it in talking about service. But I... I keep thinking about what you said about about Russia not wanting to attack and God putting them they in don't their mouth to. and pulling them down. Well, I, there's a, an account of, of something almost identical to that. You know, it's told in, in Isaiah and it's also told in in in, in uh, uh, Second Kings, uh, where where the Assyrians come and they besiege Jerusalem after they had already taken the northern kingdom of Israel into captivity. And, and old Rab Shaki, that general, comes to, to yeah. Jerusalem, tells him he's going to take them and everything, and nothing they can do about it. And, you know, I, uh, you know Hezekiah goes and prays, and Isaiah comes, and he says, he says, yeah, I've heard what he said, but, you know, they're not even going to cast them out against this city 
they're not going to shoot an arrow. So I want to put a hook in his mouth or his nose or something and turn him around. And he got word that, that his king wanted him to go fight somewhere in Egypt or someplace, and they yeah. took off. And there wasn't any war. And it, there was nearly 200,000 Assyrian soldiers with him, and they just took off and went somewhere else. And he said, I'll be back. Well, he never came back. So God can make them do what he wants to do. He says, he says uh, I'm the Lord. I, I'm the Lord thy God. There is none beside me. There is none like me. He says, uh, I declare the end from the beginning. I purpose the thing and I do it. He says, I call a ravenous bird from the east. He said, I call a man uh, to, to go and do my will. You know, he uses unsaved people and he makes unsaved people do what he wants them to do all the time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, it just dawned on me just now, and they too, uh, not very often things dawn on me, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 91. Yes. Psalm 91. The, the missiles, the ballistic missiles, the drones, 300 of them. And notice what it says in Psalm 91. And think about this, all these swarms of missiles coming in. Look what it says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. When were those missiles sent? At night. At night, by the terror of a night. And they came, it took them nine hours to get there. And then, nor that arrow that flieth by day. And co your coffee's talking. Hello? Hello? Well, hello. But anyway, notice in Psalm 91, it's talking about, I, I think it's talking about also nuclear weapons as well. Because if you go in and read Psalm 91, you're going to find where uh, it's not, he's not talking about bow and arrow. He's talking about missiles fly, uh, coming by night and God protecting. And I think you're seeing God's protection on Israel now. Yes. You're seeing it now. And the nations are reluctant to come against Israel right now. What they're going to have is they're going to have a peace treaty. Antichrist is going to make a covenant. They're going to build their temple. It's going to look like peace and safety is coming. They're going to have their red heifer ashes. They're going to get everything together. They're going to receive their Messiah. The world's going to say, okay, you know, the world's in a mess. It's, and, and the world's going to see this man of wonder, a man of power. And then uh, in the middle of the great tribulation, by the way, we'll be gone. In the middle of the great tribulation, this antichrist, false prophet, will turn against Israel. And so that's in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. So you see how close we are? One, we're so close. One prophecy teacher I like called and said, we're going to be watching from the mezzanine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and from the sky. We're in the sky box. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you, you think about everything that's falling in order. I mean, it's, we're there. And I said this morning, this is the worst time ever to be out of church. Yes. If you're watching this by live stream, this is the worst time ever to be out of church. This is the worst time ever to be backslid. This is the worst time ever to be caught up in the world. Because I guarantee you, God's trying to get people's attention. And Israel is right surrounded by all this happening. And uh, we're going to see the man of sin rise up any time. But thank God we're going to be gone as a church. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, you, you read a psalm, and just let me bring up one verse from another psalm, or a couple of verses from Psalm 2. You know, every, the world makes their plans. You know, Iran does this, and, and uh, Syria does that, and Russia does the other, and China. And Psalm 2 says, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's Jesus saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And this is he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. God just laughs at all these plans that the heathen make to do us in, to do Jerusalem in. 
The world hates Jerusalem because God loves Israel. And that's why that since the devil hates God, then he's going to hate Israel and he'll cause other people to hate Israel. I want you to think about Israel. Israel's not serving God. And, and building the temple is an insult to Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, Israel is not serving God. They, they rejected the Messiah. And they're waiting for an imposter to come and take the place that rightfully belongs to Jesus. So what's happening right now, Israel, with Israel, God is not pleased. No. But we need to understand that God has his heart. He made a covenant with Abraham made a covenant with Isaac and Jacob that he would give them the land. He would protect them. That he would, it's not about Israel, it's about God. It's not about Israel's sin, not about Israel's wickedness. It's about God. God said he'd do something and God will do it. We can trust God. We can't trust man, but we can trust God. And we need to understand that God is protecting Israel, not because she needs to be protected, well, she does need to be protected, but not because uh, God is required to do it. He made a, co a commitment, a, a covenant with Israel that he would do that. It's not about Israel. It's about God, his integrity, his power, his might. And uh, God is watching over Israel. Think about it. Where did Jesus grow up? In Israel. Where did he play as a little boy? Nazareth. I think he played in the valley of, of Megiddo, Jez, Jezreel. I believe he played in those valleys as a young That's teenager. That's in Galilee. I believe, I believe he played in those little places as a young boy. And then not only did he enjoy growing up along the Sea of Galilee and Nazareth, different places. And that's where he preached I mean, at first. you know, and then he picks out some disciples. Most of them weren't worth shooting. But he picked him out. And those disciples were his buddies. I mean, they were dumb as a box of rocks, but they were his buddies. And so, you know, God has a soft spot in his heart for Israel. That's his home place. How many like to go back to your home place and look around? I I've, do. I've been I, and looked. It's all, it's all paved over now. It's all paved over? Well, if you wasn't so old, it wouldn't be that way. You know, look at it this way. In God's <laughs> I heard it. Did you hear that? Yeah, in God's relationship to Israel, think about it this way. Say you got a kid, he's really a bum, he's, he's, he's misbehaving, he's not doing anything right, uh, but, but let somebody else lay a hand on him. Yeah. yeah. That's, my, that's, like, that's my kid. Get your hand off my kid. And God's looking at Israel, what Israel's going to be. He's not looking at just what she is now. He's looking yeah. at what she's going to be. He's going to redeem her as a nation. Jesus Christ's going to, we're going to gather in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we're coming back. Yeah, and for Moses, through all the prophets, all the way up through Paul and John, writing the last books of the Bible, there is a remnant that is going to be protected. God promises a remnant. The same as he promised to, to Elijah. He said, there's 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal or kissed the hand. Well, the, Paul says in, in, in Romans 9 through 11 that, that God is going to do the same thing for Israel. He's going to preserve a remnant, and they will be preserved to the end. They will inherit the kingdom. And that's where I was preaching this morning. Little, little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. You know, and it's the, what, what kingdom is it? <laughs> it, is the, it is the deal that God made with David. He said, and your throne shall be an everlasting throne. How long is everlasting? And long Jesus, time. And Jesus long is going to occupy that throne. The angel told Mary about Jesus. He said, and he, talking about the father, says, and he will give him, Jesus, the throne of his father, David. That's right. That's right. So no, God no, made a promise. Uh, see, no matter uh, no matter how bad a kid's acting up, he's still your kid. It's true. That's true. And the good thing about God is he can kill you and then raise you up again and kill you again and raise you up again. <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I, <laughs> hello. <laughs> My God can 
bring about pretty hard punishment sometimes. But he's a good God. Amen. And uh, God never has to worry about how hard he spanks us. He can always revive us and always bless us and encourage us. I am, I am excited. In your heart, you have no need that we tell you that this is the times and seasons. You know in your heart that the Lord could come in any moment. You know that. And, of course, there's, the preachers have preached long and loud about Israel became a nation in 1948, and she did. And it was a great assembling of Valley of Dry Bones. She has risen to be a great military force, and that has happened. It's true that, uh, you know, the Scripture says in Matthew 24 that when you see the fig tree begin to bud, you know, summer's nigh. Uh, you see, uh, he talked about the fig tree rebudding, regoing. A lot of people say, well, the fig tree's a picture of Israel. Actually, it's not. The picture of Israel is the olive tree. I can prove that by reading, Revela uh, reading Romans chapter 11. The, the tree of Israel is the olive tree. In Revelation 11. Yep. The fig tree, however, is the ministry of Israel. It is the Levites. Remember when Jesus came down into the city, he saw the fig tree and it had leaves but had no fruit. He cursed it and it died. Well, the reason he cursed it and it died is because it represented the Levites. It represented the ministry in the temple. And, and it was dead. Been, there should have been fruit, James. There should yeah. have been fruit and on so the And so Jesus cursed that fig tree. It withered and died. And so as you see the fig tree begin to bud, we know it's summer's nigh. As you see the fig tree begin to come, come about, we're not talking about this generation should not pass. We're talking about... We're talking about the ministry of the Levites. What are they getting ready to sacrifice? The red heifers. They're getting their ministry back to prepare for the Levite and the priesthood and the, uh, and the ministry. And so when Israel starts getting involved in their priesthood and their temple, then God begins to time, clock begins to tick. Right now the clock is frozen but when Israel begins to rise up their temple, they begin to, God begins to deal with Israel in the area of you know, making a covenant for one week. The clock starts ticking, and that's seven years ticking in the clock. Now, say you have a basketball dame, and this a basketball dame, I think I went to the game with her. <clears throat> basketball game. You had a basketball game, and then you're right there in the last minute, and... Uh, Let's say that, that there's a foul and a challenge, and, uh, and it's just like taking forever. Well, well, the clock is not running all that time. The clock will not start running again until the ball is put into play. So God starts dealing with it. And then when, w w what happens, according to Daniel, uh, to Daniel uh, 9, uh, yeah, Daniel 9, 26 and 27, that, 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 that the, the false Messiah is going to make this covenant with Israel. And, uh, and, and it is the confirming of that covenant, that peace covenant, that's when the ball goes into play. That, it, it, the timer starts then. It, it could be a short time after the rapture. It could be a day after the rapture. You and I have talked about maybe there's a, a gap of time for, the, for the, the guy who will be the Antichrist to consolidate his power. But he will rise, and that time clock starts immediately then as soon as they confirm the covenant. Now, that's the way I see it. I can't be dogmatic about it, but that's what I think. They, they won't have any problem. The Antichrist and the false prophet won't have any problem with assets because when the church is raptured, your house is going to belong to him. Yeah. To the state. <laughs> yeah, it's going to belong to the government. It almost does now. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. But everything that, all the assets are going to go, and there's going to be chaos, so they'll be pulling it together. And then they'll put the money together, the market of beats. It's, I mean, it's, it's there. We're here at the time in which it could happen any moment. And I'm thankful for the fact that we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And we're getting out of here. You say, well, you're just using that as an escapism. You better believe it. Amen. Using I, that as a crutch, you better believe it. How could, how could something that's real be escapism? Uh, I mean, 
it, they, they charge us with that the same way as they charge us with easy believism because we don't believe we can work for our salvation, that we believe that salvation is by grace through faith. Yeah. And not of works, lest any man should boast. And they say, well, we're easy believers. They say, all you got to do to go to heaven is believe. Well, yeah, that's true. That's what the scripture says. And, uh, and, and, and there is a mindset that thinks that you're trying to get out of work. Uh, they, they call us lazy Christians, easy believers, looking for a way out. Well, to me, I mean, I'm looking at this world around me that's getting more rotten every day. And, uh, and, and I, I don't see, uh, I don't see that, that, that I'm, I'm taking an easy way out by staying here as long as I have, you know. I mean, just think about all the, think about how we may be persecuted before the rapture comes. Think about our brothers and sisters around the world that and die there, every day. And there are people that teach that we got to be persecuted and we got to be burned at the stake and before the Lord comes. Well, tell that to the people in the first century after Jesus went back to heaven. People that burned, at sta Nero burning Christians at the stake to light his streets in Rome. Tell that to, tell that to someone overseas right now where Hamas or, or ISIS is taking a pocket knife and cut someone's head off. Right. Holding their hair and cutting their head off. On, uh, tell that, you know, we need to understand that just because it's not happening here doesn't mean it's not happening there. And the world is under a lot of pressure, a lot of, and the church is under tremendous persecution. Uh, in fact, I I don't remember the statistics, but I understand there's more more Christians martyred for Jesus Christ today than ever before. I read today. the same thing. They said there were more martyrs, uh, more martyrs, martyrs in the 21st century so far than there was. I don't know. I don't know how how far back they went. Yeah, all the others combined, because uh, there's so many more people, so there's so many more sure. of us to kill. Uh, there, you know, we're not escaping anything because until the rapture comes, until Jesus comes, any of us could be tortured, jailed, killed for Christ. You know, we could have our property taken, we could have our lives taken, we could have our family be separated from our family, we could be thrown into jail. All those things have traditionally happened to us, and they may happen to us again. I submit, as I have before, the only reason that's not happening to us now is because we live here. We're, we're insulated from it, but the moment that insulation is gone, then what's going to keep them from, from taking us? And we're also promised as a church in the end time that the Lord would keep us from the hour that should come upon the whole earth. Right. Uh, to try it, that one hour. And that, uh, that's the church of Philadelphia. Revelation 3. Revelation 3. And, and we're told that God will keep us from the wrath. We're not appointed unto wrath, but unto salvation through Jesus Christ. And we're told, where is it? In Luke 21, where it says, pray that you can't be kind of worthy to... Yeah. Escape all these things that's come come upon the earth. Luke so 21. God just promised that He's going to take us off the planet before He gets involved with tearing the thing up, you know, shredding it to pieces. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So we, we're we're being realist. Uh, we need to understand that the only reason we're not being persecuted is because we live in the state in the United States. And, uh, and it's against the law to persecute us, but when it's not against the law anymore, they're going to come after us. And that could happen That could happen before the rapture because it's happening other places. And many of us may have to die for Christ. As during COVID, I was still going to visit people when they would let me that were dying and whatnot. And they says, well, you can't go there. You might get COVID. And I said, you know what? We have always gone to the sick and the dying we went in the influenza epidemic. We went when there was cholera. We went when there was the bubonic plague. And I said, don't you think that it may be Jesus' will that some of us die of COVID while we're trying to minister to the sick and the dying? That's always happened. That's always been the case. What are we afraid of? That's being a realist. But if Jesus comes tonight, I don't have to worry about dying of COVID tomorrow. I'm excited about getting out of here. Amen. I mean, I believe the Lord could come at any moment. I believe that he could come before Gala has to have her surgery. This is a beautiful yeah. passage. Amen. 
According to Wheelchair Rick, this is what I was quoting when I came out of the brain surgery when I was in ICU. He swears I was quoting this. He had to look it up when he went back to the van. Verse 34 of chapter 21 of Luke. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell upon the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And that's not talking about the everyday persecution and torment and torture and possible death that the Christian has always faced except in the United States. Uh, it, the, the thing that we're going to escape is the great tribulation, we the are. seven years of hell on earth. God's wrath upon man. And all through Revelation, after the church is raptured in chapter 4, verse 1, all, he never refers to the people on the earth. He always refers to the people on the earth as earth dwellers, yeah. those yeah. that dwell earth upon dwellers. the earth. And he doesn't talk about us like that. Well, you know, you, you stop and think about Christians that were burned at the stake. You look like a sportscaster. It, it, it wasn't God. Yeah. <laughs> with, that, yeah. with that microphone? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want it? No, you just, you just, it just dawned on me that you look like you're calling the okay. game. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, anyway, it wasn't God burning those Christians. You know, people having their heads cut off and God doing it. You know, the persecution of a Christian, it's not God doing it. What's the difference between the Great Tribulation and what's happening now in the past? God's doing it in the Great Tribulation. That's the difference. It's the wrath of God going to be poured out upon the earth. And before he does that, he's taking us home. That's the difference. And to show how great he is, James, while he's, even while he's pouring his wrath out on the earth dwellers, he's given those earth dwellers a chance to come to him every day with 144,000 witnesses, with the two witnesses in chapter 11, with an angel that preaches the gospel from the air. And, and plus all the people who those witnesses con convert to Christ. He's going to, he's, what's that, what's that verse uh, that Paul, I can't remember where it is, something Paul said in one of his sermons, he says, but he left not himself without witness. Yeah. God always leaves a witness. And there will be many, many people saved during the great tribulation, and that's going to make Satan even matter. I believe there'll be more people saved in the great tribulation than there has the whole church age. I do too. A I do. great harvest, I the multitude without a great, number. A great, a great harvest. And so, you know, that's exciting. And, um, but here's, here, I, I, we're about out of town, out of time, Jimmy, but. We hadn't started Jude yet. We didn't even get to Jude. There's always well, next week. The, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I even brought my notes. This is the third time I brought my notes, but we never got to them. On the eighth day, God created notes. Uh, he did? <laughs> I didn't know that. I saved them. You know? <laughs> anyway. Uh, here, here's what has me concerned. We know, we know the times and seasons, Jimmy. We know, we know that this thing could wrap up any moment. But you've got uh, people all over the world that thinks this is just normal. They think it's just, you know, they're having a conflict over there. It's not going to come to our place. We're, you know, the Lord, this is just one of them things. You know, it might be another 300 years for the Lord before the Lord comes back. People are unconcerned. And, and the Bible is very clear. In the days of Noah, they knew not until the flood came. And took them all and away. And took them all away. So this thing's going to be sudden. And by the way, the Bible says, I come quickly. That word quickly don't mean quickly as in the next five minutes. That quickly, the, I come quickly means sudden. 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 Boom. We're out of here. And then it's going to come upon the world just suddenly. Um. You know, you, uh, Brother Ryrie, that wrote the, the notes for that great study Bible, he's long dead now. Uh, but he, he, he gave that definition the same way you did. He was, wrote a book about it. And it, says, it, says, it said, sudden and soon, suddenly and soon are not always the same thing. He wrote a paper on that, that and that's, that's a little bit different. Is anybody here familiar with Amir Sirfati? I know that I know that Josh is. He's a Messianic Jew yeah. and prophecy teacher, yeah. and he lives in Galilee. 
And he, he broadcast this morning from Galilee, and it showed, you could see the edge of the valley of, 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 of Megiddo in the background yeah. behind his head from where he was broadcasting from. And he was talking about how near it was, and he was encouraging people. Uh, he said, you know, this could be, this could be the beginning of, the, of some of the wars that, that bring on the rapture that happened right before. He said, but we can't be sure. And he's living there in the middle of it. And he, he says, but we do know this. He says that, that we belong to God, and the people who are trying to destroy us don't belong to God. Yeah. Right. right, right. <laughs> and, and, and that's then, something we need to keep in mind. And we didn't mention, we haven't mentioned the earthquakes. Been everywhere. There's, there's a lot of earthquakes taking place. And look at all of them that survived the eclipse. Oh, you know, I... You know, I, that was a that was just an amazing thing. <laughs> Look, so many here. They've been, <laughs> we're blessed. They've been, we're they've, blessed. They've been having an eclipse for ever since the beginning of time. I'm sure that Adam and Eve watched one. Did you watch it? Yeah, we were out in the afternoon, and Ron had a pair of glasses from somewhere. And so when it got to the height, I was, I was like in the parking lot out front of the hotel and, and the lights, it got dark enough for the lights to come on in the parking lot. So I put the glasses on and looked up and what I could see, it was covered with black. It was just like a, a fingernail moon shape of all the sun that you could see. And then it started, it, it only you know, hung in there for two or three minutes and then it was going away again. I mean, it was cool to look at. Even a sun needs to take a nap once in a while. That's exactly right. But, I mean, it, it was cool to see, but it didn't make us any money. Everybody was, everybody, you know, preachers were preaching that the Lord's going to come during the eclipse. There's going to be a great earthquake. It could have happened, but, you know, the truth is I wasn't concerned about the sign in the heaven with the earthquake. I was more concerned about the signs on earth right now. We're yeah. seeing them. And I'm more convinced that the Lord could come any moment because of the Israel preparing for their temple. And, you know, everybody coming in, the League of Nations coming together. I'm more concerned about that. And what can ignite that could be the rapture, could be a nuclear blast. I mean, as, as uh, Carter Carlin said, it's amazing what a nuclear bomb can ruin your day. Amen. And I'm sure that a nuclear bomb could run the world's day in and, just any, in just second. James, let me remind remind everybody of something we've talked about before about the stage being set. I'm not saying that that Gog and Magog or the beginning of an ongoing Gog and Magog, however you want to look at it. I'm not saying that that is close. But what I am saying is is that the alliance of nations necessary for that to happen is in existence right now. There is a economic and military alliance and political alliance between Turkey, Iran, Syria, and Russia. And those are the, the, the four main players in this, uh, in this war. Persia, Gomer, Rosh, yeah, and, so, Tubal. And, so, and Tubal. So you see that, that the, the players are in place, whether whether they're being together right now ignites round one of Gog Magog, I don't know. But all I know is that the players are on the field. They're there. Everything's there. I mean, everything is there. We're good to go. Ignition, take off. <laughs> yep, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> do that again. <laughs> okay. Don't do that ever again. I had a car that sounded like that when you tried to start it. <laughs> Do not do that ever again, Jimmy. It was right. a Renault. We're going to have to quit. We didn't even get to the book of Jude. Yeah. That means Jimmy's got to come back. Amen. Yes. <laughs> I'm ready. And I didn't get to talk about I didn't get to talk about why God wants why God has said in order that we're going to die physically. And I hadn't get to talk about my notes and and another passage I read because as you know Second Peter chapter two speaks of many of the same things that Jude does. True. And he had a phrase in there that caught me so heavily that I preached about it while I was at the conference, talking about the people who are like the false prophets and the, the false teachers among us. It says that they have eyes full of adultery and true. they cannot cease from sin. That's true. And these are supposed to be some of our Christian leaders. 
That's true. And I hate to say it, but there's a lot of churches out there, it's all about money. Yeah. They're building their little kingdom. They're building their, their, they're building their big homes or doing their big thing. And uh, I'm not against having a nice home, not against having some things and money, but you got to keep your focus. The Lord's coming soon. Got to keep your focus. All right, we're going to have questions for a few minutes, and we're glad that you made it out tonight. We didn't get into the book of Jude, but uh, what if I was to tell you the Lord gave me some revelation about Adam and Eve, their creation, and how God had had spoke to Adam about why he was going to die physically and, and, and why uh, we're separated spiritually and the difference between that and angels and how dying physically gives us a chance to go at it again. It's amazing. Some things the Lord showed me. We'll share that some other time if we ever get into the book of Jude. Well, I'm certainly interested. You're what? I'm certainly interested. Are you interested? Good. Any question? Raise your hand. You have a question or a comment? Criticism. <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> I have a little bit of the numbers. Opendoors.org has a persecution world watch list. Yes. And they say 365 million Christians are currently under persecution around the world. They give that as one in seven worldwide, one in five in Africa, and two in five in Asia. 4,998 murdered in the last year. 14,766 churches and Christian properties attacked. And uh, 4,125 Christians detained. That's within the last year. And within the last year. Article, uh, somewhere that said that, that the 20 and 21st century, more persecution in that time than all of the previous centuries combined. So that puts it in perspective. That's real hard facts that they're monitoring even now. So uh, another good website that I try to check a couple of times a week that's accessible to anyone is Voice of the Martyrs. And you can kind of, they keep track of things like that also. We can see what your brothers and sisters around the world are having so, to put yeah, up with. Yeah, if you wonder what's happening, there's some numbers that's really happening right now. We just don't realize it here yet. Yeah, all those killed within the last year. Yeah, that's what I'm gathering from. Yeah. That was their 2024. That's amazing. That they were giving out. Yeah. And we could be in World War III by this time next week. We could be in World We may already be in it, you know. It, but it's going to come quickly. And so I'm, I'm excited. The whole place is going to blow up. I'm excited. The whole place is going to melt and fall apart. Boy, isn't that good news. Well, it might it is for us if we're Christians. You know, you think about things that would happen if there was another war and it got us all involved in it. It's like, it's like we wouldn't get to see like Maury Povich's millionth paternity test in the afternoon. Uh, we wouldn't get to, we wouldn't get to see the view put us down anymore. We wouldn't, you know, be, think of all the things we'd miss if we had a big war and it took all the resources and attention. Jimmy, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking about daytime TV. Don't. What if you're are you sick, talking about, Jimmy? If you're ever sick and at home, don't turn on your TV in the daytime because you don't know what you're going to see. <laughs> Anybody have a question, comment? We're going to wrap this up. Oh, you're going to be gone next week, aren't you? No, I'll be here with you. I'll be, I'll be somewhere in the morning, but I'll be here next Sunday night. Okay. Now, we got to decide now. We are going to get in the book of Jude, right? Yes, unless you come up with something else. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, unless, ready. I'm ready to roll with the unless, punches. Unless a nuclear bomb goes off, and we'll have plenty to talk about. That's right. If it do not go off here. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel safe that it won't go off If it here. goes off here, we're going higher than we've ever been. That's right. <laughs> yeah, going to be with Jesus where there is no sin. We're going higher than we've ever been. In, is that a song? That's a song, but I'm not going to sing it to I you. I like it. I like that song. I mean, I'm not I like gonna the sing, lyric. I'm not going to sing it to you. we got to quit. <laughs> I was waiting for him to sing. You gonna sing? No, wait for you to sing. I'm not singing. Jimmy, that ain't gonna happen. 
Now you pressure me, I'm not gonna sit with you up here anymore. This is a low pressure deal, man. If anybody ever felt any pressure from me, they're lying to you. It's like, I'm kind of like, I don't pressure nobody. I'm gonna see you Tuesday night down at your yes. church. Yes, we're gonna pressure you into coming. No. <laughs> Come All if you right. can, it'll be fun. It will be fun. All right, if there's no questions or comments, we're gonna quit. And we're glad you came. I mean, glad you came. And keep your eye on the news. And you'll probably get more accurate news after today. You kind of search for it. What's some news channels that they can go look at, Jimmy? Well, I mean, I, 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 I watched You don't want Fox. to go to the secular. I've, I've watched MSLSD before, but it's, it's kind of, it's hard to follow what's going on. Uh, I, I like looking at I like looking at my computer at different different sites. I know there's there's some people in Israel that I follow, like the Times of Israel, and uh, and uh, and and there's some end times people that live in Israel and prophecy teachers that that put up good updates. So uh, check it out this week. Look at what's going on. Because I'm telling you, we're right here. We're Behold right Israel is a good site to go to. What is it? Behold, Behold Israel. Israel. Okay. And look it up, follow it, see what's happening. Because I guarantee you what's happening over there is telling us what's going to happen here soon. And we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in there. And that's awesome. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen. Amen to that. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. All right. Let's all stand. we be dismissed in prayer. All right. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house. I'm going to ask Brother Jerry if he would dismiss us in prayer.